you guys welcome to the latest episode of this unbelievable life you guys i have been waiting so long to get stephanie on and um I cannot wait to to share this information with you. So today's guest is Stephanie Terry, who is my creative, committed, driven, and visionary friend. I have known her for years, and I literally cannot wait to hear what she has to say. But Stephanie leads by example. Her calm, confident nature has served her well in her personal life within the business sector and in Vanderbilt County government. And she has also, on top of that, been a successful nonprofit leader. She is a consensus builder who believes that getting credit uh, for your efforts is secondary to accomplishing the mission at hand. She was born in Evansville and graduated from Bossy High School, just like my husband, Bob. Uh, and then after receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in biology from Kentucky State University, she went on to earn a Master of Science degree in Health Service Administration from the University of Evansville. She has worked as a public health administrator with the Indiana State Department of Health. Then she has also worked with Carver Community Organization for four years as their deputy director. But currently, she has been the executive director of the Children's Museum of Evansville for 12 years. Her accomplishments at CMO um, have come in the wake then of nearly 20 years of participation and experience in the nonprofit organization management at various youth service agencies in the area. She's also on our Vanderbilt City, I'm sorry, Vanderbilt County Council, and she has served on the board of directors of many organizations. Her resume and accomplishments go on and on, and they are so absolutely fabulous. I am going to drop them in the post when we share this, but I just, you know, in the meantime, um, just wanted to hit on some of, just some of the many highlights. But Stephanie, I'm going to let you take it away to tell us your vision of, of our community and what you've got coming down the pipe. Thank you so much, Nikki. I, I, number one, I truly appreciate the, the warm welcome and invitation to share this morning. This is such an exciting time. Uh, for the first time in our city's history, we're going to have a woman as a mayor. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm extremely grateful to have served this community for the last 12 years on the Vandenberg County Council. Evansville is the place where I was born and raised. It's it's the place where I went to school, as you've already said. It's the place where I began my family. And it's the place where I worship. But it's also the place where I'm surrounded by so many friends and relatives like you. My, pers my past personal and professional experiences, I think really have prepared me for this next chapter. I've lived within the walls as a leader of one of Evansville's greatest assets, the Children's Museum, for the last 12 years. And I'm ready to take this innovative and creative approach to our entire city. I've seen the way kids uh, and parents respond to a safe and interactive environment. It reminds me that Evansville should be responsible every single day for investing in quality of place. Whether it's more attention to our parks and system, adding safe, affordable and accessible housing, additional co connectivity with bike lanes and sidewalks, uh, creating more connected, a more connected community, or quite simply, paving the streets. And I think we all can relate to that. <laughs> we need to do the little things, I think, the most important things and do them right. We need to continue investing in the basics of quality of place. And that's really why I'm running for mayor, because I genuinely um, care about the forward progress of this city, but more importantly, the prosperity of its people. I would like to build upon the progress that has been made by our current administration, but also make Evansville a place that works for everyone. I come into this uh, race and this journey with no hidden agenda. I simply wanna do what's best for the people of this community. Through my work on the Vandenberg County Council, alongside fellow counselors, I've supported job creation through economic development. I was also very supportive and served um, on, on the board for some time uh, the realignment of the region's economic development organization, which is now called EREP. Other investments I've supported while on the council have included funding for COVID testing in the hardest hit areas back in 2020. Um, recently, countywide broadband coverage, which was huge for our community, an investment um, in our arts and culture organizations and other nonprofits, road repairs, as well as funding for the jail expansion uh, which for me included a mental health wing, which I think is so very important. Um, you know, there are a lot of, you know, individuals that are in our, our jail system that need true treatment for their mental health issues. And so having this addition is going to be tremendous and I think transformative for our community to help people get back on track in the right way. As your mayor, 
I, I will work in a bipartisan manner on the issues that matter to all of us, um, from workforce training and economic development, public safety, um, neighborhood revitalization and eliminating bright, infrastructure improvements and increased attention on our youth, which are dear to my heart. As a community, we have an opportunity to, well, to speak into this vision uh, for the city's future throughout this campaign. I, I hope to, to launch some um, politics on the porch conversations here very soon uh, where uh, you'll be able to speak into the vision. But here's some of the things I believe will help us continue moving forward as a, as a community. Uh, number one for me is education. I think education is always gonna be a top priority uh, for my administration. I know from my own upbringing in Evansville that providing our youth the best education is key to helping them achieve their potential. Youth development and education is where I've served most of my professional career. I think, you know, aligned um, with talent EVV goals, uh, I'm going to be a strong supporter of community building, uh, neighborhood level cradle to career systems to provide children with the health, the social and educational supports they need from birth through college and career. Uh, some of you viewing may, may not be familiar, but Talent EVV um, is a vision for a stronger Evansville region that's that's focused on really preparing a highly skilled workforce. Uh, it's, you know, it's about growing our population, also improving our quality of place, which you're going to hear, I think, over and over uh, again this morning, but then also upward mobility, making sure every family has education and job opportunities, food and access to food shelter and healthcare to prosper and thrive in this region. Talent EVV, um, it, it's really built on the work of a, a diverse and broad group um, from public and private business, um, elected officials, nonprofits, and like-minded organizations throughout our region. It's a tremendous effort and I'm excited about the work that has already been done and where we're headed um, at, as a community. In the education space, what, what this looked like for me as a mayor um, I'm going to be an advocate for expanding access to early learning resources. I'm going to also make sure that we invest in, invest in non-traditional spaces for learning, like museums and libraries. And simply, I want to be a convener of key stakeholders to ensure that the city does all that it can to support our schools. Let's talk about public safety. We cannot have a prosperous Evansville unless it's uniformly a safe place to live, work, and raise a family. We not only have to address the crime that occur that occurs today, but of tomorrow. Our approach um, to public safety, it must be built upon mutual trust. We have to adopt innovative practices and approaches to policing and invest in our communities and youth to address the root causes of crime from generational poverty, mental health issues, and substance abuse. My top priority will, will, will be to ensure that public safety agenda agencies have the best training, uh, that they have the best equipment and resources needed to deliver effective service. Initially, we will have to increase the police force. We've got to expand our recruitment strategies again to build up um, our police force. We've got to engage in community, effective community policing strategies, arrest individuals involved with group violence, and continue to collaborate with specialists to address the nonviolent issues that currently require a police response like a missing person or um, alarm runs. I, I get those, we get those periodically here at the museum and even traffic assist. Under my administration, I think we're gonna continue to promote economic growth by championing Evansville as a destination to establish and grow your business. It's also gonna be important for me uh, that we amplify the contributions of small business in our community and offer them incentives and support. I mean, they are they are the kind of the lifeline of our community. And so we wanna to continue to build up those small businesses in our community. We must also continue elevating and promoting Evansville and its diverse cultural assets as a mechanism to generate economic activity, to attract and retain talent here, as well as attract tourists. But my last priority, we're gonna develop our neighborhoods through maintaining and improving and activating our parks, prioritizing development in underserved areas throughout our community. I've had the privilege of serving on our downtown economic improvement district for some years now, and I'm excited about all that it is occurring in our downtown area. But I also want to see us expand beyond downtown to do some meaningful uh, development in areas, again, that have been um, overlooked over the years. 
I want to see us invest resources to create housing that is affordable, continue to implement our complete streets plan that improves the safety, equitable access, and will really help us connect as a community. I always get excited every Sunday, uh, every summer. Um, I I should do it more, and I hopefully this summer will will be better. But uh, when they completed the the culvert um, bike lane, I wanted to I wanted to go right out as soon as I could to try the bike lane out. It's a busy street, but it really provided an opportunity again for uh, again that connectivity and for me to to to, to take, take a ride in areas that I normally would not had it not been available. So I'm really excited about that and how we can continue to evolve that in the future. As a mayor, I'm looking forward to um, sponsoring citywide series of, you know, at neighborhood parks or rec centers, you know, gathering spaces, cookouts and, and concerts during the spring and summer months um, in partnership with our neighborhood associations to foster a sense of community around our shared public assets. We, we all have to chip in to ensure that they are very well maintained um, and uh, that they, again, can be places that we want to um, gather in. With a true commitment to inclusion, diversity, and equity, as a city, I think we're also gonna expand access to opportunities for everyone to be included. Um, I will lead by example um, in diversity recruitment and ensure we have inclusive policies without, with, throughout, the, the, throughout the city. As you can imagine, none of these challenges have simple solutions. Um, a lot of them I've said, they're not, they're not new to us. We, we know the challenges that our community faces, but I'm committed to doing the work but I cannot do it alone. We have seen some positive results when people work together. Uh, look how the community stepped up right after the recent house explosion. During the pandemic, near $6 million was raised and awarded to nonprofits negatively impacted by COVID. It's that level of collaboration that will be vital to our city's forward progress. Together we will and we can move Evansville forward. I believe in Evansville's potential, its people, and our collective capacity to make our city stronger and one that we all can be proud of. I've said a lot today, Nikki, <laughs> and probably said it too fast, um, but I thank you so much for this opportunity. This election, I really believe, is critical to Evansville's future. So it's important that we, number one, get out to vote. We know, I think there's over 80,000 or so registered voters, but only 20% come out to vote. So it is very important that we pay attention uh, this, you know, this campaign cycle um, and get out there and vote. To those viewing, I really would appreciate your support and vote on November 7th. Um, if you want to learn more about me and my vision, please visit VoteTerry.com. On social media, both on Instagram and Facebook, my uh, handle is Terry for mayor. And I believe that together we're going to do great things. Um, and I just appreciate again, Nikki, this opportunity to share a few thoughts about where we're headed as a city. Stephanie, thank you so much for sharing what I call your unbelievable life. Um, I am so proud of you and I find you so inspirational. So if anybody, you know, wants more information, definitely dive into Stephanie's socials or her, her website, or you can reach out to me with questions. But again, I am so proud of you. Uh, best of luck in the race. And, you know, we know where to find you if, if, again, we have questions or if anybody wants to help support your campaign. With that said, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to listen to this latest episode. And I wish you all a blessed and fabulous day.